So for the headbangers and for those that love them, here is another two-part rock metal update. Let's get into it, headbangers. In the background, one of this summer's best pickups, this is Saxon's 3LP live set, Eagles Over Rockin. Whether you pick this up on vinyl or you pick it up on CD, just pick it up. Rolling on, there's been some seriously cool finds over the past month, month and a half. So here they are. First is Axel Rudy Pell, ARP, and this is Circle of the Oaths, Live on Fire. This is the 2012 tour. Very cool set. And this is just a great band. They're a uh, German power metal, if you want to call it that. It's just killer, killer metal. Uh, Johnny, I've always said G-O-L-E on vocals, is perfect for this band. And Mike Tirana is an animal on the drums. This is a three LP set, and they're all on colored vinyl, of course. First one, yellow. And here's the sleeve. They did a fantastic job on this set. And this is another one that's not to be missed. Here's LP2. Again, very killer inner sleeve. And this one is just like an orange vinyl, if you can pick that up. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I can't say enough good things about this. Amazon had a killer sale, just one of their bizarre price drops that kind of put this into the more affordable range. And this is on like a burgundy or a wine colored vinyl. You know, it's, you just gotta dig German power metal uh, guitar stuff. And Axel Rudy Pell here is just, he's a, a maestro and just amazing on guitar. His leads are searing. And uh, like I said, Mike Tirana on drums, he's an absolute animal. They break into so many cool tunes from the Circle of the Oath album, which is excellent. Mike's got a drum solo that just sets the standard for them. Amazing stuff. Let's get through the rest of these. First is uh, a couple of books. Here's Sammy Hagar's Red. Uh, this is a pretty inexpensive pickup. I think I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. I'm a Sammy fan. I like his pre-Van Halen stuff more than his Van Halen stuff. And here is Slash's book from 2007. Again, an inexpensive pickup. And much like with always, if it's something that you've read, leave me comments because again, you just, it can only help to know what to read next and you can only read so much. So if you read either the Slash or Sammy's Red bio, and Sammy's I'm definitely looking forward to, probably a little more than Slash, let me know and I'll kind of, it, it just helps you gauge what to read next and I always appreciate the comments. So a little punk, what's LJ doing with punk? Oh. I don't have a lot of punk. I'm not a huge punk fan, but I couldn't pass up the exploited debut, Punk's Not Dead. Uh, this is an Italian press on Secret Records, and it's a great album. You know, there was a time in high school where I had a lot more punk than I do now. Now I kind of just steer towards more of the commercial stuff, The Clash and uh, Sex Pistols. I, you know, I have a lot of those. I did a punk video a long time ago, which you can go find, but. You know, it's not every day that you trip over an original pressing from Italy of the Exploited's first album, Punk's Not Dead. I spun it and, you know, it's cool. I haven't heard this in a long, long, long time. So I thought it was a pretty neat find. Still forging way down that Marillion path. Here's script for a Jester's Tear. This turned up today. I've been hooked on Misplaced Childhood. I ordered and I'm waiting for a, a CD copy of Magpie, La Gaza Ladra, the live album. It's a little pricey on vinyl, so I settled for a CD for now. But this turned up today and I am already loving it. I've only spun through side one so far. A little darker than Misplaced Childhood, but still a fantastic album. Uh, this one was easy. To hell with the devil. Say what you will about them, but you know, when a near mint copy of an album that you have a pretty good copy of shows up, and what drove me nuts, Sing Along Song is my favorite track from this album. It's a great track, and everybody's favorite Bible Humpers, the Bumblebees, Striper, that song had a tick in it that now even when I hear it on a, this one's a first press, and it's just near mid, this is like four bucks, <clears throat> no big deal. But I've heard it that way and had that copy for so long that when it kicks into that first chorus, I hear the tick, whether it's there or not. But it was just an opportunity to get a near mint copy in the collection. Here's Accept Breaker. Uh, this. For me, with Accept, I love Accept, don't get me wrong, and those first couple albums are fantastic. Uh, it's on Passport Records, but they're just not the Accept you would come to know and love. They kind of hadn't found their way yet. But Breaker just set in motion what is, you know, five, five, four or five perfect Accept albums. You have Breaker, Restless and Wild, Balls to the Wall, 
Metal Heart and Russian Roulette. Those five, just perfect, perfect except. In Blood of the Nations and Stalingrad are still, from just a few years back, still two of the strongest comeback albums in history. All right, from here on in with this part one, it's just gonna be a, a Testament love fest. So if you do not dig Testament, if you don't love Testament, and if you don't wanna see Testament, just hit the road. Um, just hit stop, watch something else, because it's, it's Testament love fest. Now, I, uh, as far as Testament goes, here's what I have on vinyl. I did not have the legacy. Now, it was when, a couple of weeks ago, I kind of got into a Testament funk and I was just listening to them nonstop. And I realized the Legacy is one I did not have, along with the two newest ones. Uh, the Legacy's been really difficult to find. This is the Back on Black reissue. And man, Back on Black always does a phenomenal job. So I just started scouring around and I was able to find a brand new copy for a really great price. So I grabbed it. Um, these are, again, the Back on Black reissues. And this one is on, I think, a purple vinyl. Very cool labels. And the Legacy has never been my favorite Testament album, but it's a great Testament album. So I was really happy to finally add this to the collection. And this is a classic lineup of Eric, Alex, Chuck, Louie, and, um, and Greg on bass. Fantastic stuff. Now, one thing I realized, I don't think I've ever shown, unless it was a long time ago, is the other Back on Black reissues. And here is Testaments to New Order. This is one of my favorite Testament albums, and I think it's a lot of people's. And the reason I wanted to show them is just they're on just killer looking vinyl. Uh, this is more like a clear, it's got like a white tinge to it for the new water. And along with everything Back on Black does, they're just phenomenal. You know, I have the Slayer reissues, Hello Ace, uh, Show No Mercy and Live Undead, Judas Priest Pain, uh, Painkiller. No, all these are on Back on Black. And just anything Back on Black touches, if you're even considering it, grab it because they nail it every time. Here's Practice What You Preach. I'd have to say pound for pound, song for song, Practice What You Preach is probably my favorite Testament album. I just love it. Again, that same classic lineup, and this is just the stuff that dominated Headbangers Ball back in the day. This one is on white vinyl, and all of these sound amazing. So not only is the packaging killer, but they look killer, they sound killer, and I think they're actually pretty still widely available. And until Back on Black reissued these, and here's uh, Souls of Black, I love this album too. It was just really hard to find Testament on vinyl. So for the longest time, except for the Legacy, these are the ones that I had on vinyl. Uh, the New Order, Souls of Black, and Practice What You Preach. I hadn't picked up the two latest ones yet, and Souls of Black is on blue vinyl. Again, fantastic album. So finding, listening to these uh, kind of drove me to the Legacy. I need to find it and pick it up, and I did. And then it was just, it was time. I had not grabbed Formation of Damnation on vinyl. I'm gonna make sure they're not gonna fall out. Uh, it does come with an insert. And what's worth noting is that you have Chuck, Eric, Alex, and Greg all functioning as a unit in Testament again with Paul Bostaff on drums. And Paul Bostaff played with Slayer and a number of other bands. Paul's a maniac on the drum kit. And Formation of Damnation has to be one of the best Testament albums since the heyday. The Ritual has always been my favorite Testament album. And after that, I know a lot of people like The Gathering. I just lost Testament. I couldn't follow them anymore. It's on green vinyl. They started doing a lot of the death metal growling vocals and with low and demonic. And I just, I gave up on Testament. One day they'll come back. And if they don't, thanks for the tunes. But that Formation of Damnation, again, much like the other one, if, if you're even thinking about it, stop thinking, start buying. Because it's a killer album. And I'm sorry I missed out on it for the last few years that it's been out. And may as well just complete the collection. Here's Dark Roots of Earth. I've spun Dark Roots of Earth a couple of times. Uh, it's the same core band. Again, you have Chuck, Eric, Alex, and Greg, except now uh, Gene Hoglin has stepped in on drums. This album is much darker. It's on like a blue splatter vinyl, which is pretty cool, and it's got neat labels. So far, it's the slowest one to set for me. I'm not getting it just yet, but I'm not giving up on Testament twice, so it'll just take some time. I know a lot of people have this. They've shown it and they love it, and I'm sure in time, I'll get it too. So that is it for the Testament Love Fest and part one of the Metal Update. Part two on deck coming up. Stay tuned. Later.